In this section of the tutorial, we're going to be concentrating on the basics of Massive and its basic functionality. The first of these videos is going to cover the oscillators. And we're going to cover the main oscillators uh, in this video. And um, although there are really six sound sources, as I previously mentioned in the first section, um, we're going to look at oscillator one, two, and three. Um, and really, these are the main sound source of Massive. This is where the sound starts and really is the source of its power, if you like. So if you think about it, um, oscillator one, two, and three, um, by just having a quick look at them, are basically identical. So all you really have to do is understand one of these units and you understand all three. And once you understand one, you can layer and multiply and mix different sound sources using these three main oscillators. Now, any complex patch in Massive is going to use possibly two, three, or all sound sources. You can see that I've got a pad loaded up here called Binary Dream, and it uses pretty much everything, um, including noise and feedback circuitry, to uh, create sound. We'll have a quick listen to this now. Now you can hear it's a really rich, complex sound, um, really involving, and it uses a lot of different oscillators and sound sources to get that um, final result. But really, to understand the oscillators, we can strip things right back, and we can just look at one single oscillator, and I think that's going to be very useful in this case. So to do that, I'm just going to go to File, and I'm going to click New Sound. Now immediately, Massive is um, initialized, and pretty much all we've got is a single, very simple um, saw wave. And this is a great starting point, not just for looking at the oscillators, as we're going to do now, but for creating any sound. So that's a great little tip and something that you should uh, think about using. Don't worry about um, losing the sound you're on. If you go to recent files here, you can see there's Binary Dream. That's the last one we were working with. Um, and you can see all the other sounds that I've been looking at um, in uh, sort of recent sessions, or in this session at least. And then you can clear that menu as well if you like. So let's have a look at this first oscillator here. Now, if you're at all um, familiar with synthesis, you're going to recognize immediately some of these controls. Like we've got pitch, we can change the um, the octave, or at least the note, sorry, of the... Um, and this is exactly the same as moving one or two notes on the keyboard. We can mo move an entire octave by... You can either, by the way, you can either hold this down and scroll or use the little arrows. Um, but we can move an entire octave by going 12 notes up. And we can also fine tune it using the send control here. You can see a little minus sign comes up when you go down and not one when you go up. So back to zero. And there we go, we're ready to go. Um, and then we've got three controls for each oscillator depending on which oscillator waveform uh, we pick. So let's look at the choices that we've got when it comes to changing the oscillator's output and its mode. If we click this main left box here, our list comes up, and I showed you this in an earlier part of the tutorial, um, but basically it gives you all your options um, for um, the waveforms that these oscillators can create. Now on the far left, and this was added in a slightly later version of Massive, um, a while back now, but it was a later edition, we've got a virtual analog section, and you can see VA here. So we've got a pulse saw with pulse width modulation, or a pulse saw with sync. We're going to go with a pulse width modulation, and you can see now that these have actually changed. Um, we've got a pulse saw position and a pulse width modulation control. Uh, if we change this, and change this, you can hear pulse width modulation occurring, and that's changing the length between the actual internal parts of the waveform itself. So you're really changing the, the whole nature and timbre of the sound. Now, if I move to the other modes, um, away from the virtual analog, and by the way, the virtual analog is really just recreating an analog synth. So if you want that retro raw sound, go for those two waves. Um, and we can move anything between pulse and uh, saw waves there. Um, but if you want something a little bit more off the wall, a little different, you can try moving into these um, 
larger tables and larger options to the right. Now these use something called wavetable synthesis and they literally are large tables of different kinds of waves and when, once you've got one of those loaded, you can change the wavetable position to create all kinds of different um, oscillator types within that one oscillator. So you can really create dynamic sweeping events with just one oscillator type. Um, let's have a listen to, say, this grown one in analog stroke electric. And you'll now see that the three different controls, at least the first two are different. We've got wavetable position, as I mentioned before, and intensity. So if we change that, you'll hear it sweeping through this table of waves within this one wavetable type. Great, so there you can see we can really change the sound just by using that wavetable position. And we've got loads and loads of different uh, choices in the wavetable uh, synthesis section. And we'll go for a form and saw. We'll try one of those. And you can see they're divided into basic, analog electric, digital hybrid, and effects chords. So you get a really good idea of what you're going to be picking. The name, some of the names at least, give you a pretty good clue as well to what it's going to sound like. So depending on what sort of sound you want to create, you can choose from one of these lists and you can mix up to three of these. So you've really got a great choice of different oscillators and different sounds. So for instance, we could choose um, additive mix for oscillator one. We could choose uh, reducer or kangaroo for oscillator two in the electric section. And then we could go for something like modern talking in the digital hybrid. And we can hear the, these all mixed together. And remember, you can mix these using the amp control, which is basically just a volume control, a level for each one. You can actually change the pitch of any single oscillator. and you can switch them on and off using these LEDs. So it's reasonably simple to get a, a mixed sound going uh, with multiple oscillators, and choosing your oscillators is also very straightforward. Altering their parameters should be quite easy, and it's quite clear which parameters are available for each oscillator um, here at the top of each knob. So if I change this back to virtual analog, you can see it switches back to our pulse width modulation, and you're back where you started. So next up, we'll be taking a look at the modulation oscillator and how this differs from oscillators 1, 2, and 3.